Today we're going to be working on Bob Ross dice. Or, you know what? Let's do a completely different intro. Well, hey there. My name's Rabo Ross, and welcome to the joy of dice making. I want to thank you for being here with us today while we paint up some dice that we started last week and get them looking real nice. I've got my tiny little easel for just such occasions, and I think we'll go ahead and get started right away. Thank you for that intro, Rabo Ross. If you remember last week, we tried to make gradient dice, and they didn't exactly turn out how we liked. So we're going to try and turn those failures into happy little accidents. And a quick recap, we made some resin dice blanks that we coated in white spray paint, or white gesso if you're a real big Bob Ross fan. They basically look the same. And what is that D6 if not a canvas cube? It would be a shame to leave the canvas unpainted like that, so let's go ahead and paint it with some Vallejo game colors. I'm using the starter set, and I'll put a link to that below. The only one I added was that jade green color because it's absolutely gorgeous. And I have a wet palette from Army Painter and a paint pot from Citadel. I'm using all the different paint brands, including brushes. I have a bunch of crap ones, and then I have some Windsor and Newton for all those people who really like paint and minis the proper way. Not all of our canvases are going to be made equal. We have a nice flat surface with this D6 here to where we can try and do things like using a paint knife like Bob Ross does, but it's probably not going to happen on much of them. After getting some inspiration on which paintings I wanted to try and replicate, I set up my palette with all of my different colors. It actually is really nice to have them all laid out like this. You don't have to think about, oh, I need a drop of this or a drop of that. So having them all laid out, I see why you do it, Bob. It's a good idea. Now I'm going to take some blue and try and make a sky. Mixing a bit of white with the blue will make a really nice looking sky. However, the crisscross stroke technique that Bob does all the time on his canvas is very hard to do when you're working in miniature scale like this. I'm thinking millimeters where he's thinking inches and feet as he does things. So we have to adjust. Just. No big deal, I coat the top half of my D8, D6, and two-sided coin in the blue sky color and then add a little bit more white to try and create some clouds. To that, I add even more white, making it almost purely white to add highlights to the clouds. And so far, I'm not thinking this is looking too bad. It's a very promising start, though we have a long, long way to go. I only loosely mix up some blue with some white to create a varied pattern of paint on the roll on the edge of my paint knife. I'm trying to recreate his mountain-making technique on the dice, and it does not go well. I would consider this one of many failures. Not failures, happy little accidents. You know what, Ribo Ross, you're right, and let's push on and just try and do it by hand with the brush for now. It's not great, but it'll work, and remember, we are very, very close up as we're doing these things. I try and recreate the same style of unmixed paint on the edge to create mountains, but it doesn't work that well with a brush, and so I found the best technique is to use an old crappy brush and add some white and just pull it through. That makes a really nice bright side of the mountains, and so hey, we're looking okay, if you consider finger paint looks okay, but remember, perspective, we're gonna zoom out in a bit. Now we need to add the water to the ground and I'm going to mix varying blues and some whites to make a lake looking water to kind of contrast with the blues we have on both the sky and the mountain. Adding a little bit more white to that to create a highlight within the water where the sun would be reflected and then it was time to add some trees. I took the thinnest brush that I possibly had and still got trees that were thick with three C's. That's a hard sentence to say by the way. Now you don't have to do this. I really thought you might see these through the trees, but you're not going to end up seeing them in the long run, unless you're a better painter than I am, which is very possible. Bob Ross uses a fan brush, but as you can see, my fan brush is bigger than my entire D6, so I don't have that option. I try and stipple on some green paint and use what I think the metric term is way too much on there, and so I cover up a lot of the painting in green. But that's okay, I try to make grass going behind the lake and over all of my uh, happy little accidents of inner tree trunks because those were way too big anyway. I add a little bit of yellow to the green to add some highlights on the grass on the ground. That way you can tell the difference between it and the trees on the side and then even more yellow to highlight where the sun would be on the sides of the trees. And if you look at it right now, you're probably not too impressed, but that's okay. I wasn't too impressed either. Truly, at the time, I kind of set them down and walked away because I wasn't liking how they were looking, and I tried a few different painting techniques, making some golden ones and some Aurora Borealis, but after I actually let them sit there and looked away, I was like, wow, I really like these. I'm impressed with how these look. If you're zoomed right in on them, they look bad. A lot of paintings look bad if you're zoomed very in on the paintings, but if you actually take a step back and take a look at them, they look pretty good. I even tried to redo them with a pink sunset in the background on the D4 and the D12, and the D4 turned out to be my absolute favorite. I love it. Comment down below if you can name all of the Bob Ross paintings that I tried to base mine off of. Hint, it's going to be very hard because I'm very bad, but the only one my wife actually said she did not like was 
is the Aurora Borealis. And I got to agree, I tried to do the paint technique where you paint it white and then pull up with colors and it looks really cool, but that doesn't work on such a tiny scale, so I had a bad time. Either way, the D4 looks fantastic and exactly what I was hoping these would turn out to be. And so it was time to put these inside some resin. Just like before, we're going to be using a one-to-one -one by volume mixture of resin. I'm using Envirotex light resin. It's really crystal clear resin so that we can see the art inside. And then we got to mix up all of that resin. You could call it mixing or you could beat the devil out of that resin. After beating the devil out of it for about five minutes, we lay out some wax paper and do exactly what we've done with the rest of our shell dice over the past few weeks. This outer mold is going to place all of our inner canvas or now painted dice inside of it and they're going to float right in the center of them. It's got the numbers in which we'll paint and you'll be able to see them just like normal dice. We fill each of these molds about two thirds of the way up with resin. That way our painted blanks can go inside of them and resin will envelop it on all sides and there hopefully won't be any large gaps or voids due to air bubbles being stuck in the bottom. After putting our painted blanks inside of the molds, then all we have to do is coat the top in excess resin in which I always take a lighter and pop excess bubbles. That way we can try and prevent any voids that might form. After putting the lid on and shaking it down to where it makes a nice seal on the top, we can put it inside of our pressure pot and I leave it in for about 72 hours. You don't have to, but it makes sure that it's really going to be a glass-like hardness. After their stint in the pressure pot, our dice are completed. Sometimes you luck out and don't have to do any sanding because it seals just perfectly, and this is one of those times. These dice look awesome. I was so happy with how they turned out, and I think part of the reason is because the clear resin acts like a varnish over paintings. If you've ever seen a painting pre and post varnish, they look vastly different, and they look so much better when they have a varnish on them. It makes the colors so vibrant and pop. Now, I think these look awesome. I think you can absolutely tell what they're supposed to be, though they are definitely a kindergarten grade version of painting. I'm not very good at it. Somebody else could do way better. But remember, if you look up close at these things, they don't look like a whole lot of anything. You can tell what they are, but they're not great. This D6 is a prime example. It looks super good from far away, but up close, oh man, it is a hot mess. The D8 looks fantastic. The bottom half of it is entirely that grass color. I did that on a lot of them. That way it didn't detract from the actual paintings, though on some of them I painted the entire things. Even the Aurora Borealis looks better than it did before with this kind of resin varnish on it. Now, Bob Ross always signs his in red, but I always make my dice in gold, so I thought why not combine the two? I gotta give Bob Ross the man, the myth, the legend, the highest number spot. He always signs his with that red R at the bottom, and I always thought that was so cool. And I like gold a lot, but hey, we gotta give credit where credit's due, and the highest number will be that same red like his red R. So on the D6, the 6 will be painted red. On the D20, the logo, or the 20, will be painted red. Thanks again, Dicey Encounters, for letting me use your shell molds. I'm going to paint the rest of the numbers, however, in my favorite color, gold. Mostly because the gold won't detract from the paintings as much as red would. The gold kind of blends in with the green and the blues and lets you appreciate the paintings where the red would be the star of the show, and that's not really what I want. Going from a project that I was really upset about and called a failure into something like this makes me so happy. These are by no means painted by an expert. They're so tiny I did the absolute best I can. I've never painted a picture in my life until now. And it was painted so tiny I am darn proud of myself. This is actually my favorite dice set. And I know I say that a lot, but I'm really proud that I tried this one and am willing to show off how bad these look up close because I still think they look fantastic in the hand and on the table, which is where they're meant to look good. And so I'm darn proud of these dice. I was worried that the gold inking on the gold background dice wasn't going to pop enough, but they look fantastic. You can absolutely read them without having to squint or anything or strain your eyes. I think they look awesome, and I do think that the red definitely would have taken away being too much on these dice. So I'm really happy with them, and they're not just lookers, they sound really good too. And come on, what more could you ask for? Nat 20 on the second roll, I think Bob Ross has blessed these himself, so thank you to Bob. I gotta say that these turned out monumentally better than expected, and they came because Dicey Encounters and I are challenging each other to paint a set using the shell dice and see what we can create with a painted set. I am a monumental Bob Ross fan, and credit him for helping me get through college, being able to listen to his show while I was doing stressful things and stressful periods of college and work. It just was what I needed to be able to make it through. So this is kind of my fan art towards Bob Ross. I'm sad that he won't be around to see it, 
but I'm still thankful nonetheless for what he's done in my life and the peace that he's given me. So from me to you, Bob, happy painting and God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you like this video and might want to see some more. Go ahead and click the like button if you like it. Dislike button if you dislike that. I'll still see it. And go check out the Bob Ross YouTube channel. Every single Bob Ross episode has been uploaded over there and it is an absolute treat. So thank you again for watching and I hope that you have a fantastic day.